Halfway down, halfway to go, and who else looks like they would belong in a halfway house other than Rochelle? You know what? Actually, no. Rochelle is a respectable member of society, a delightful human being, and she has a keen sense of humor. If you don't like her as a character, then you're just dumb. The one that belongs in a halfway house is actually her high school crush, Francis. So we're doing Francis. Let's look into the I hate everything loving, Christmas celebrating, tatted up, and violence seeking biker slash gang member. Survivor profile. Francis. What? Calm down. Calm down. No! I hate Xbox 360. Thank God. As always, we're going for the Left 4 Dead website and Wikia. His age is unknown, hometown unknown. Pretty much all the Left 4 Dead 1 survivors are unknown when it comes to those regards. He's cocky, loud, and pretty sure he's indestructible. Francis acts like the zombie apocalypse is the world's biggest bar fight. When the virus hit, everyone else stockpiled food and looked for a place to hide. Francis found a gun and had some fun. No cops, no lawyers, no order. If it wasn't for all the zombies, he could almost get used to a life like this. The most boastful and quick to judge survivor of the original four, Francis's background isn't much beyond a drunken Harley rider waiting for the next stint in a local jail cell. All we could tell about his life prior to the green flu outbreak was that Francis was employed by the shipping company Hirsch, but it didn't last long because he slugged a man in the face. Francis also adorns plenty of tats, mostly representing loyalty to the Hells Angels motorcycle club, which also should be a dead giveaway with his greasy biker vest. Although with a goody boy proper name like Francis, it must have been hard for him to get street cred. I can just imagine his grandmother visiting him in the middle of a bar fight and offering everyone cookies as a peace offering, and Francis just exclaiming that he hates cookies. What exactly does Francis hate? Stay tuned till the end of the video for everything he hates. To make up for his boyish name, Francis attempted to steal a flat screen television two days after the first infection. He tried to persuade authorities into thinking he himself was a police officer gathering evidence for a crime, but of course the cops on scene didn't believe a word he said. Later on, he's drinking in a local bar, bragging his ass off about how and why he's going to jail, passing off how hilarious he is for trying to impersonate a cop. He receives some bad news, though, when a friend informs him that Pennsylvania jails do not allow conjugal visits for a little er e er e er e Bad impersonation, I know. A woman we can maybe say is either Francis's girlfriend, Sandra, or future infected with benefits, grabs Francis by the hand and heads to the back room, wanting to claim her man before he became incarcerated. Foreplay gets a little too kinky, and she vomits all over his vest, causing Francis to almost say he hates vomit, but hey, he may be into it, I'm not one to judge. He tries leaving, and she insists for him to stay until she bites him in a very non-kinky way. Well, unless you're into BDSM and drawing blood from a bite, if that's up your alley. Before Francis can decide he's into it, his boy Duke comes in and guns her down, proclaiming she's infected with the recent outbreak. Francis realizes the severity of the green blue outbreak, and he goes completely fucking nuts with the idea of anarchy in the USA. He and two of his friends haul a jukebox to the roof of the bar with shotgun in hand and shoot down zombies left and right, just like in the Dawn of the Dead remake. After the bar roof shoot down, we aren't given any info on what happened between the time Francis was with his barmates to when he met up with Zoe, Lewis, and Bill. But considering the highly contagious spread of the infection, it's most likely that they all turned and Francis would say that he hated all of them before blowing their brains out. He does admit in the sacrifice that he finds his old friends more fun to be with during the apocalypse, but he himself probably wouldn't have lasted two weeks if he hadn't met the group that he's with now. But what does he really think of this unfun group of survivors and the people he meets on the bridge? Let's dig into that. The old vet and the biker pretty much hate each other, plain and simple, but it's like a pair of siblings that say they would kill each other, but really respect one another. They'll constantly joke about leaving them behind or not caring if they died, but at the same time acknowledge their quirks and their strengths within the group. Francis may not like listening to authority, but he is not one to lead, and he sees Bill as the undisputed leader. Francis almost threw his life away, realizing Bill was facing death itself after Bill jumped down to raise the bridge, and if it wasn't for Zoe stopping him, we may have had
had the deaths of Bill and Francis. As I said in the Zoe profile video, the beta versions of Zoe and Francis were going to be romantically involved. Remnants of this relationship still remain considering Francis is least disrespectful to Zoe, or that just may be proper etiquette from Grandma's boy Francis. He may be somewhat of a gentleman towards her, but Zoe tends to show a general disdain for him. The only real confrontation between the two is in Crash Course when Zoe kills the helicopter pilot who had just turned infected. Francis shows constant hate for having to walk for such a long distance, but, you know, Zoe just says, get the hell over. So you're interested? Ugh, not if you were the last man on Earth. I could arrange that. Ha ha ha! All right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To contrast all the hate and negativity released by Francis, the creative team added the positive yin to his yang in Lewis. Francis dislikes Lewis's optimism about everything and every situation. To get an idea of Francis's opposing demeanor towards Lewis, all you have to do is look at his dreams. While Bill may have been a waiter waiting on him hand and foot, Lewis, on the other hand, was on a separate island far, far away from Francis in his self-made paradise. No matter the remark from Francis, Lewis will always have a positive retort or witty comeback, but they also go back and forth over if the infected are zombies or vampires or cops. The one time Lewis finally gives up his positive outlook upon the bridge failing in the sacrifice, Francis says they have survived a lot worse situations and that things would be alright, showing that Lewis had made an impact on him and that their portrayals of constant negativity and positivity can be shifted. Lewis, I told you there were vampires! No, they're not Francis. The second group of survivors have varied opinions of each other when it comes to Francis. The least noticeable at first is with Coach. Francis doesn't say much to him except assume that Coach is Rochelle's father. Rochelle laughs her ass off at the notion, which Coach takes offense to, considering Rochelle and Coach are 15 years different in age. I think you look beautiful, Coach. I'm just saying that, buddy. I'm just saying that now. Love you, man. Respect. Put some respect on my name. Y'all understand me? When y'all saying yeah. my name, put some respect on it. Now, an interesting underlying dynamic between two characters, both of the criminals of the series, Nick and Francis, seem to completely hate each other, referring to each other as a greasy vest wearing monkey. Go to hell, suit. Despite their distaste for one another, Francis wishes Nick good luck and calls him a brother upon Nick's departure. Good luck, thanks! Nick! Good luck, my brother. I owe you one, Francis. Now, in the Nick Survivor profile, I showed a glimpse of an image telling how they share the same gang symbol. Time to unravel that little mystery. On Nick's ring is the symbol of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, the same symbol shown tatted on Francis' arm. Maybe they're from the same gang or chapter of the gang across the country and show mutual respect for one another because of it, but due to being macho men, will show it only through a brace of insults and shitty behavior. This can be backed up when Nick is leaving and, of course, Francis tells him, good luck, brother. Now, maybe they knew each other previously, they w don't want to say it, but I guess we'll never know. Until Left 4 Dead 3 comes out in February 29th, 2018, yeah! Yeah! Francis and Ellis get along pretty well. They both have a mutual belief that the presence of real zombies... Other guy. I'm not talking to any goddamn vampire. Oh man, I know, man, that's what I've been saying. If there are zombies, there has got to be vampires. Wolfman, mummies, aliens, all that shit, man. It just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been saying. Their only conflict comes over Jimmy Gibbs Jr., who Francis believes either to be a man or a dog who sells tacos. Ellis will get angry with Francis over this. Francis also claims that he hates Ellis's hat, but laughs it off as a joke. Ellis will take it all as a joke, but when Coach makes the joke that Francis stole the Jimmy Gibbs, Minute we left, I bet he stole the Jimmy Gibbs Jr. I will kill him. Folks, we got a new goal. New World is gonna have to wait. We gonna have to hunt that biker man down. Great, thanks coach. I don't trust that biker. He's probably long gone by now. He'll be there. You know him that well. I saw how he was looking at Rochelle. He ain't going nowhere. Now somebody has to love Rocham, but I mean Rochelle, and the Ellis Zoe pair wasn't going to be the only cannon ship being set out to sea. Francis instantly has a thing for Ferrero Rocher. 
I mean Rochelle, calling her his lovely little angel and sob at her departure. He might also cry out, I love you, Ro, as they drove away. He compliments her taste in music when commenting on her shirt, referring to the pitch mode as classy. As seen in the passing trailer, upon meeting Rochelle one-on-one, -on -one, they exchange how they both hate many different things until... I hate those stairs. I know. I hate that bridge. It's so stupid. I hate your vest. What now? Ugh. I don't think this is gonna work out. So he basically he cuts things off at that point, but I'm sure there's still something there. So Francis isn't the best at relationships, but neither am I. <laughs> Anyways, here's a list of things that Francis hates. I hate stairs. I hate subways. I hate sewers. I hate hospitals. And doctors and lawyers and cops. I hate elevators. I hate train yards. I hate small towns. I hate the water. I hate the woods. I hate tunnels. I hate vans. I hate Ayn Rand. I hate steam. You're fired. Pipes. Steam. Pipes. Oh my god, I hate Canada so much. If there's one thing I hate more than vampires, it's Canada, eh? I already hate this place. Let's get out of here. I hate helicopters. I hate walking. I hate parades. This sign says, I hate Mondays. Man, tell me about it. Unless it's lasagna Mondays. I love lasagna. I hate birds. Yeah, birds are dicks. I hate goodbyes. Hey, Ellis, I hate your hat. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Sandy beaches, coconuts, sand, beaches, sand. Ah, uh, wait a minute, I hate islands. Eh, don't worry. I hate boats, too. I hate suicide missions. I hate these stupid generators. You know, I didn't like the idea of a deserted island at first, but I'm starting to get a good feeling about this. I hate your good feelings. I hate fish. I like eating them. That's one of the ways I let fish know how much I hate them. Francis, what's the first thing you're gonna do when we get to the island? Start hating it. Come on, Francis, give it a rest. No, I'm being serious. I really hate islands. I have insulophobia. I'm afraid of islands. Are you joking? No, oh, man, it's a medical condition. Just my goddamn luck. Shit, Francis. When we get there, I got your back. I'm gonna keep an eye on that island for you. Stupid island. Punk island. Dumbass island, shithole. Punk ass island, bitch. Now, Francis just said he has insulophobia, a supposed fear of islands. However, insulophobia is interestingly enough defined as a fear of being isolated. So even though Francis was bullshitting, he could have been on the nose about going to the island due to preconceived fears of maybe being alone or stranded. We all know he's bullshitting, of course, about the fear, and we can discount this fear when we see his dream sequence in the Sacrifice comic where he is chatting it up on an island with tons of sexy bikini babes. Out of all the beta designs for the original Survivors, none were more drastic in difference than Lewis and Francis. I spoke about Francis in the Zoe profile, but I just cannot get over how much of a brutal legend reject that he looked. If they were to have a movie on the beta survivors, Jack Black would have been a great cast as an actor. Now, I didn't realize this until I researched it, but Francis has the Val famous Lambda logo shaved into his head. Whenever Francis picks himself up a good old shotgun, he'll sometimes mutter the word groovy. Left 4 Dead being a full-on horror movie reference, this one in particular to the 1987 movie Evil Dead 2, when Bruce picks himself up a sawed-off shotgun and says, Groovy. Did you know Francis cannot swim? During the sacrifice in the starting safe room of the port finale, Francis may state that he is against the island plan at all. In response, Bill says they're defensible, Francis. As far as we know, zombies can't swim. 
And after that, Francis will grumble, they're not the only ones. Which hints that Francis can't swim either, and Lewis offers to teach him how to swim once they get to the island. So now it makes sense for Francis to at least die when he jumps in an open body of water, but we still have seven other survivors that instantly die when they jump in the water. So, you know, video game logic. I mean, I have a whole fact series on that. Well, that's about it for your favorite bike riding criminal. Did I miss anything about the greasy vest wearing monkey? Are you tired of my Rochelle jokes? Well, too bad on that one. What do you want to see get profiled next? Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for live updates on the channel and tune in on the weekends for the Verses with Friends and Fans live streams and our Sunday fun days where we play any game. And if you like this video, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the bell near the sub button so you can get updated instantly when I release videos. And keep this channel going by donating to our Patreon and to shop our merch at redbubble.com. I'd like to give a huge shout out and wow to Patreon donator Jason Zacker. You are very wow, bro. So wow. Well, that's it. As Francis would say, I hate all of you. No, I don't. I really like you guys. You guys are fucking awesome. Go watch one of my other videos and stay tuned for the next installment. And uh, stay well, I guess. Ah! You're kidding! Judge, judge. Fuck this game! Fuck you!